Hi everyone. This video is intended to serve as the third in a series that I've been putting together on fixed effects regression for those uh, cases where you are working with repeated measures or longitudinal data. So briefly, uh, the first video that I uh, had put together, uh, essentially what I was doing was modeling predictors of student uh, science grades over time as a function of several time varying predictors which included uh, perceived uh, language, perceived math, perceived science uh, ability, and then also uh, math grades. And in my second video uh, I demonstrated how it would be possible to model a one-way or uh, perform essentially a one-way repeated measures ANOVA by way of fixed effects regression. So in this video we're going to be kind of combining insights from the first two videos and basically integrating them together uh, to allow us to predict variation in a time varying outcome as a function of both uh, a set of time varying predictors as well as a measure of time itself. So what we can do is we can uh, test whether uh, there's any remaining effects of time even after controlling for uh, a set of time varying predictors that are included in your regression model. So uh, briefly uh, before I get started I do want to mention that underneath the video description you'll find a link to the data set that you see on your screen uh, so you can download a copy of the data to follow along. You'll also find a supplemental PowerPoint that you might find useful when it comes to interpretation of the results. And then finally, I do want to mention that we're going to be using the least squares dummy variable approach uh, in performing our analysis. So this is the same approach that we were using in uh, the previous two videos. So let's talk briefly about the data set itself. So our data uh, is basically airline data and so you'll notice that we've got six airlines that are represented in the data set. We've got uh, Delta, United, uh, US Air and so forth all the way down to um, Trans America right here. And so we have repeated measurements in terms of cost, output, fuel and load. Uh, with those measurements uh, spanning the years 1970 all the way through 1984. So basically the first 15 rows in our data set uh, incorporate uh, those repeated measurements for cost, output, fuel, and load for Delta Airlines. Then if we scroll down a little bit further we've got the next 15 rows uh, that uh, incorporate measures of cost, output, fuel and load for United and so forth. So as you can see right here the data set is already in long format as opposed to wide format. So if the data set was in wide format you would need to restructure it into long format in order to perform the analyses um, as we're going to be uh, describing in this video. And I already cover how to do that uh, or how to uh, perform that restructuring in my previous two videos so I'm not going to be going over it here. So we're just again we're going to start from the assumption that our data is already in long format. So to carry out our analysis what we're going to start off by doing is uh, creating dummy variables for to represent the different airlines. So in um, SPSS version 28 there's a nice little uh, uh, option which is to create dummy variables right here so you can actually create those dummy variables uh, quite efficiently by going through this route if you're using a previous version of SPSS that does not incorporate this option then you would probably uh, then well then you would need to uh, utilize some other approach to create dummy variables probably using the uh, recode function so I'm going to cr uh, click on create dummy variables right here and kind of reset this for a second and I'm going to move uh, the airline ID variable over to this box for create dummy variables for. So keep in mind that in, in order to use this menu option right here um, the variable that you're creating dummies for need to be needs to be um, registering as a categorical variable. So right here you can see that airline ID is, are, is being recognized as a nominal variable so it'll work. If I if this variable was, was already in, was in scale or set as scale uh, then you would have problems with creating those dummy variables so you need to reset this to say nominal or ordinal in order to do the dummy variable approach that I'm showing you right here. So we moved airline ID over 
where it says root names, I'm going to type in ID uh, and then press enter right here. And so now you can see that we've got in our data set a set of six dummy variables that have been added. So essentially for the first dummy variable, you'll notice that we've got values of one which um, are reflecting Delta Airlines right there. And then the remaining values on that variable across the rows uh, are zeros. And you can see that for uh, the second dummy variable, Delta is coded zero. And then for the third one and fourth and fifth ones, all those are coded zeros. So you can see um, that through this coding system, we can easily identify Delta Airlines. And you can see for United, was, which is the second, we have uh, values of one across uh, years for United right here on uh, ID2 dummy variable and then we have zeros uh, for all of the other dummy variables uh, and again that helps us to uniquely identify United Airlines and so this system um, we have uh, one dummy variable per uh, airline that has been generated so next what we want to do is to create dummy variables for our year variable so to do that we're going to go back to transform go to uh, create dummy variables again we'll reset this and we're going to move our year variable over so you'll notice it's registering as 1970 all the way to uh, 1984 um, we could have also perhaps had a variable in our data set to reflect time such as uh, where we might have time one two three four and so forth um, either of those are, are fine or whatever but we're going to move this variable over to the create dummy variables box right here and where it says root names I'm going to call it time and we'll hit enter and so now in our data set not only do we have the ID variables um, which are dummy variables for the representing the different airlines but now we have uh, dummy variables rep representing time so basically uh, for each airline time one is indicated with a value of one on the time one variable and then zeros across all of the remaining dummy variables and so again we, we basically are, are uh, working with a time variable with 15 repeated measurements so that's that's the reason why we have 15 dummy variables uh, associated with our time variable so at this point we're ready to perform our regression analysis so to do that I'm going to go to analyze go down to regression and uh, click on linear right here and I'm going to move the dependent variable which is going to be this cost variable to the dependent variable box and then I'm going to start out by moving uh, dummy variables over representing the uh, airlines but I'm going to use the standard dummy variable approach uh, which essentially in involves using um, one less dummy variable than the total number that you see uh, in our data set and so we're going to treat uh, Delta Airlines as a reference uh, category if you will so if you're familiar with dummy variable coding you'll need to do that essentially you would use one less dummy variable than you have of the number of categories so we're going to be uh, working with five of those dummy variables as opposed to six but I'm going to but by virtue of doing that then obviously Delta Airline would be uh, treated as a reference or, or a reference category so I'm going to select dummies two through six and move them over to the independent variable uh, box and then I'm going to click next and now we're going to move all of our time varying uh, predictors over so we'll move output fuel and load over to this box and then we'll go down and we're going to add our time dummy variables but just like we did before with respect to the airlines we're going to include um, the uh, the number of dummy variables minus one so essentially I'm going to uh, select uh, dummies the second dummy variable all the way through the 15th and move them over leaving uh, that first dummy variable uh, out and so by virtue of doing this then essentially 1970 is going to be treated as a reference time point or a baseline time point in our analysis so we'll click on statistics and then on R squared change right here and then click continue and then on OK to generate our output so as we're looking at our output just briefly you'll see just kind of a description of the variables that are entered at each step we have model one which contains all of the uh, airline dummy variables and so the idea with model one is that we're trying to uh, account for all between or you know stable between stable or between uh, airline uh, 
differences when it comes to uh, the variables uh, in our analysis. Or in other words, you can think about it as uh, removal of stable factors associated with the airlines that would be confounded with the repeated measurements on our, um, on our predictor variables and our uh, dependent variable uh, cost. So then we've got uh, model number two, where we have not only incorporated our original airline ID variables, but now we're adding in uh, our, our time indicators, our time dummies, as well as our uh, three time varying predictors uh, of load, output, and fuel. So when we scroll down and look at our model summary table, we have model one, we've got the R square value right there. And so basically what this is telling us is that um, that stable between airline differences are accounting for about 65.5% of the variation in cost. Okay, so if we look at the uh, F test right here, you can see that we have statistical significance. And really, this is not of particular importance because what we're trying to do is to remove all of those stable differences so that we can look at uh, the effects of our time varying predictors on our outcome variable. So if we look then at model number two right here, we've got the R square value of 0.998. So this means that uh, when we when we uh, also incorporate our uh, time indicators and uh, our three time varying uh, predictors of load, output, and fuel, now our R square increases to 0.998. So we're accounting for about 99.8% of the variation in cost and you can see that we have statistical significance for that model but again this is not really getting at the main question which is um, what are the effects of the time varying predictors on the time varying outcome variable so to, to uh, test that we can or to address that question we could first look at the R squared change right here from model 1 to model 2 the R squared change is 0.344 so basically what's going on then is that we're um, increasing our explanatory power uh, from 0.655 to 0.998, basically a change in the R square of 0.344. So in other words, we're accounting for an additional 34.4% of the variation by adding in those, uh, uh, those within airline uh, predictor variables. And you can see here that we have the F change. Basically, this is an F test of the change in R square from model one to model two. So you can see that um, we have statistical significance. So by adding in um, our time varying predictors and our time indicators, uh, we do see a significant uh, increase in R square from model one to model two. Now, if we want a more uh, pure measure of the proportion of variation uh, in cost accounted for by the time varying predictors, what we might want to do is to purge all of the, uh, the stable between airline factors. And so we can do that. We can come up with an, uh, a what's basically is uh, referred to as a squared multiple partial R uh, that would that would index that. So to do that, all we need to do is to take the R square change value that we saw in this row right here for model two, and we place it over um, one minus the R square value that you have right here. So it's just basically one minus this. So in other words, R square change divided by 1 minus the R square from model 1 is going to get you the squared multiple partial R, which is essentially reflecting the proportion of within uh, airline variation that's accounted for by our time varying predictors. So let's go ahead and look at that. We're going to uh, just uh, activate my little calculator right here. So I'll, type, I'll um, put in 0.344, uh, divide that by, and then in the denominator, we have a little parenthesis here, we've got 1 minus 0.655 uh, in parenthesis there, and then uh, you can see right here that we're accounting for about 99.71% uh, uh, of the within airline variation as a function of load, output, fuel, and the time dummy variables. So let's scroll on down then, and you can see with our coefficients, we've got model one and model two, and really those, um, those airline dummy variables are not of particular importance. So what we really want to key in on right here um, are our three predictor variables, output, fuel, and load. So you can see right here that output uh, is a significant positive predictor 
of variation in cost over time. Uh, you can see that load is a significant negative predictor of uh, cost over time. And then you can see that fuel is actually not a significant predictor in the model. Then when we look at our dummy variables right here, You've, uh, you'll see that the first dummy variable represents uh, 1971 and the slope is a comparison uh, between um, the years 1970 and 1971. Remember that um, 1970 is our reference or baseline time point. So the 0 .055 would be the expected change in cost um, from 1970 to 1971 after controlling for the other uh, variables within the model, including those uh, time varying predictors that we had up here. So we would expect, uh, based on our um, analysis, an increase of 0 0.055 in cost, um, even after controlling for output, fuel, and load. And you can see, though, that that is not a st statistically significant change from 1970 to 1971. You can see that uh, from 1970 to 1972, there was an increase um, in cost of 0 0.097, and you can see that that increase was uh, statistically significant. If we look at the uh, change from 1970 to 1973, or the expected change, you can see uh, it is uh, 0.151, and you can see we have statistical significance there. If we continue to scroll on down, you can see that uh, the change from 1970 to 1978, we see a, a predicted increase of 0.421, with that being statistically significant. And then uh, there's one other significant um, dummy variable effect right here for 1984. So you can see that between 1970 and 1984, an expected change of 0.693, which is uh, statistically significant. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, that is uh, my demonstration of using the least squares dummy variable approach uh, when uh, modeling uh, time varying predictors and time indicators in our fixed effects regression model. So once again, uh, just to reiterate, if you look underneath the video, again, you'll find uh, a copy of the SPSS uh, data set that I was working with, so you can download that. Uh, and then also there was that copy of the PowerPoint that I was referencing uh, where I go into more detail uh, in terms of um, you know how to describe the effects that we were talking about in this video. So I, I do appreciate you watching and you guys have a great day.